when we hear the word mummy we usually think of the ones from egypt the well preserved doll color body wrapped in a white banded like strips but did you know india also has its own mummy the spiti valley of himalayas you won't find any pyramids here but you can certainly see a mummy here not like the artificially preserved mummies of egypt but a mysterious body of a man who mummified himself naturally in 1975 a powerful earthquake hit the spiti valley after that the indian soldiers were fixing the damaged road while digging one of the soldiers stuck a skull with his equipment initially people thought it was a skull of a dead calf but as they continued to dig it they were terrified of what they found they discovered a mummified body a body which hasn't decomposed the body was found in sitting position with his hand on one leg chin resting on his knee with intact skin open lips and visible teeth strangely even the hair and nails continued to grow whose body was this and what's the story behind this body according to the local people this body belongs to a buddhist monk who was born in the q village of the Spit city valley in the 14th century surprisingly dna test also confirmed that this mummy is 550 years old which directly supports the claims of the local people apparently sanga tenson was remarkable in all his studies and even mastered the local bati language but later he decided to give up on all the worldly pleasures and embrace buddhism becoming a monk sanga tenson used to spend years meditating alone in caves people say that he sacrificed his own life to save the village and the most shocking part is he started turning into a mummy while he was still alive so what was the danger he tried to protect the village from gyu was once a happy village but it faced a terrible scorpion infestation that no one could solve so the villagers went to sanka tenson seeking help apparently he spent several years practicing sacred rituals and chanting mantras gradually he gave up on food and one day his soul left his body it is said that when his soul left a rainbow appeared and the scorpion problem was resolved and sanga tenson achieved a remarkable state breaking free from the cycle of birth and death this is what the folklore says it's all fine but how did he do the mummification process how can someone mummify their own body after his death how can someone self mummify himself if we take the egyptian mummies those bodies are preserved by someone else after that person's death using artificial preservative but when sanga tenson's body was found the was fungus going on his body and that indicates no resin coating used which means it was not preserved by artificial mummification so he mummified himself this process is called sokushin butsu which means self mummification or becoming buddha in this body typically these monks followed a special diet by reducing their fat intake and eat only herbs roots and nuts they completely avoided all the food items like rice wheat dal oil all the food items which can potentially add fat into the body here the aim is to reduce the fluids in the body by stopping the fat intake as a result their organs will start to shrink which makes it difficult for the body to decompose this practice of sokushin putsu was very prevalent in japan from 11th century to 19th century the buddhist monk considered this as a path of enlightenment and becoming buddha himself in this body typically this diet of just eating herbs and nuts would last for 1000 days while some monks would repeat the process again many would go back to their normal diet not everyone who tried could achieve this state between 1081 to 1903 only 20 monks were able to successfully mummify themselves when they feel like they are approaching near death they used to lock themselves in a box 10 feet below the ground and that box would be equipped with a bamboo tube as an airway for breathing and they also had a bell to notify the people outside that they were still alive for days on end the buried monks monk would meditate in darkness and ring the bell only once a day when the bell ringing stops the monks above the ground will conclude that the buried monk has died and they would seal the tomb and let it be untouched for 1000 more days after 1000 days they would take the box outside and check whether the body has mummified or not if the body had stayed intact the other monks would conclude that the dead person had reached the state of sokushin putsu and place the body for others to worship this practice no longer happens today it was declared illegal
illegal by the Japan government in 1877. A person named Bukai, the last monk who practiced this, did this illegally and died in 1903. Seems like Sanka Tenzin also followed a similar practice which is prevalent in Japan once. Few years back, a professor named Victor Mayer from the University of Pennsylvania went to Gyo and investigated the Sangha Tenzin mummy. And he concluded that Sangha Tenzin died by fasting and also the cold climate of the Spiti Valley helped in the mummification process. Even after 500 years of being buried underground, Sangha Tenzin's skin, hair and nails are well preserved, teeth are still visible, more than anything, it's still in the sitting position. The local people asked both Indian and Tibetan border police if they could take care of Sangha Tenzin's mummy and requested to build a temple in his honor. In 2004, the Indo-Tibetan border police excavated his tomb and carefully took out the mummy. Then they built a box-shaped monastery in the village of Gyu and inside that structure, they placed the mummy of Shanga Tenzin within a thin glass box. Shanga Tenzin's story might sound different, but if you analyze it deeply, you can find many such stories in Indian culture. Be it Vallala, Ramana Maharishi, Ramakrishna and even now we can see sages meditating naked in the Himalayas. The way they choose to walk on the path of enlightenment can be different, but the aim is always the same that is attaining Mukti. No one forced them to do this. No one said you can see God by doing this. They chose to do this because they have experienced things which may not make sense to the logical minds.